portion and we will be blessed bless you daily. And so without much ado, I will offer a short word of prayer and uh, invite Brother Howard to take over. Shall we pray? Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for a time like this where we can gather around your word and take inspiration from your word. Lord, we commit this session into your hands. May your Holy Spirit take over. May this ministration be a blessing unto somebody out there. But I use the lips of my brother to be a blessing unto somebody this day. Oh, we thank you for hearing our prayers with thanksgiving our heart in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, without much ado, Brother Howard is on the line, and I'm going to hand over to him. Brother Howard, may you take over right now? Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the Son, Son of the living God, God our Savior. Um, this evening, um, I like to talk about my heart uh, to the Christian. Uh, when I'm talking about a Christian, I'm talking about the one who has received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, baptized in the name of the Lord, and uh, you receive His Spirit. Amen. First, to take a look at the scriptures, which is the word of truth. We're going into the book of Luke, chapter 4, and we're going to read the first verse. Luke 4, verse 1, it says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The first thing I want to point our attention to is Jesus Christ received the Holy Spirit. He did not start miracles. He wasn't doing signs and wonders. He was led by the same Holy Spirit into the wilderness where he's going to have to go through a test from the devil. Many times when a Christian gets born again, we receive the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't understand what is supposed to happen next. A lot of us expect that when we receive the power of the Holy Spirit, we are going to start manifesting the signs of the Spirit, casting out devils, and doing all these things. But that is because we have failed to really understand the Christian training. God never puts you in front of his people without the training. Look throughout the Bible, the Apostle Peter, the Apostle Paul. Paul specifically as an apostle to the Gentiles. When he received the Holy Ghost, he didn't just start preaching the gospel. He didn't just start the miracles. He went through a period of training. Amen. And today, I just want to encourage the Christian that is in the wilderness. I want to explain what is going on in your life. If you have not gone through this, you will go through it. And I want to share these things to you so you can be encouraged in your Christian journey. That's why I call it the Christian training. So, briefly, we can see that when a child is born, there's a lot of joy. There's, There's a lot of good things, things that are going on. The child is happy. There's, There's no, no problems. Everything he needs is taken care of. But, but as, as that child begins to grow, grow that, that child faces challenges. Trying to rise up from, from the, the ground. ground. Trying, trying to tackle the, the situation of life. Trying, trying to take the steps that he needs to, to walk with, with the other people that have gone ahead of him. Or her. And, and it stumbles. He's he frustrated. He needs to fall. And that, and that is why God himself looked through the creation and decided to encourage us. So what did God do for us? His God children to eagles. His children. Amen. He makes reference of his children in connection to eagles for his servants and for his children. Why did God use eagles? It is because eagles, when you look at them in terms of the bird kingdom or even the whole animal kingdom, but in the bird kingdom, eagles are the king of the birds. Amen. 
And ounce for ounce, pound for pound, there is nothing on the surface of this earth that is as strong and powerful as an eagle. With one move on your hand like this, an eagle can crush every bone in the back of your body. That's right. Exert over 400 pounds of force with one single move. So for you to handle an eagle, you have to wear what we call steel mesh gloves because they are known for their strength. You see, also another thing about eagles is that they are known for their eyesight. That's right. Very, very sharp eyes because eagles can see far. You see, God likens his children in the New Testament to eagles. In the Amen. Old Testament, he likened his prophets to eagles because Amen. human, the best sight, I have 20 20 in my eyes, which means that I can see very, very good vision. But an eagle has 20 slash five. What does that mean? That means what you can see at five feet perfectly. An eagle can see at 20 feet very, very perfectly. Amen. So when your eyes are sharp, when you can see deeper, when you can understand what other people cannot understand, that is what we call having an insight or revelation, or what we call having an eagle eye. So the eagles, they have a wonderful eye, you have good vision, and they have strength. So when you see somebody that has keen eyesight, you call them somebody that has an eagle eye. But the question is, why would God relate his children to eagles? It is not just about strength. Not just about, not just about because strength. we have the strength because we have of God, the strength, the supernatural strength. A Christian is stronger than a regular human being. That's right. When I say Christian, I want to emphasize, I don't mean those that go to church. Mm -hmm. I don't mean those that say they believe that God sent a prophet. I mean that those who have Christ in them, those Amen. who have true born again experience, they are stronger than a regular human being. Amen. How do we know that? Because the Bible says that they, you shall receive power in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. That's power right. to do what? Power to become or power to manifest or exert the authority or the life force of the sons of God. That's right. Because being a son of God is not something that the world is used to. Yeah. Being a son of God is not something that is common. But when you receive... Yeah, yes. we are back. So, sorry, we are back. That's Amen. fine. Amen. So, brothers, we, we, I just want to share real quickly. When I'm talking about power to become the sons of God, See, I'm talking from my heart. That's right. And I want the brothers to understand this. Because these are lessons. I've been a preacher for 21 years. And God had to take me through a lot of these things. I was wondering, I got the Holy Ghost the same day I got baptized. Why yeah. can't I walk in the power of God? Why can't I walk in miracles and lay hands on the sick and then they recover? But God had to take me through a training. There was nobody to really influence me. A little bit after I became a Christian, I was here in America by myself. There was no preacher to encourage me to, to show me the way. But the Holy Ghost had to pick me up and teach me this thing. Or I learned, as you call it, on the streets. That's right. And I began to see, yes, there was miracles in my ministry. There's power of God in my ministry. But that's not the main focus. We are not here to talk about power. We are here to encourage ourselves. How do we understand that we are actually on this journey? What is the training going to be like? Mm -hmm. So Jesus received the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit did not lead him to making miracles. He led him straight into the devil's hand in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus is our example, when we are born again, where do you think God is going to lead us? We're going to go into temptations. We are going to face pornography. We are going to face lusts. We are going to face uh, pressures of money. We are going to face materialism. We are That's going to right. 
situations that will make us lie. We're going to face all kinds of terrible things because the Christian journey is a war. That's right. And God has to train you to win the little battles before he can present you before his people. Amen. And so, brothers, we are ambassadors for Christ. But we Amen. need to find Christ. That's right. The first Bible study group that I worked with in America in 2001 was called the Ambassadors for Christ. Amen. And the thing is this, eagles are relatable to us. Amen. So when God created all these animals, we are to look at them and learn from them. Amen. That's what the book of Proverbs tells us, you know, you learn from the ants. So you learn how to save your money, how to work hard. But when it comes to eagles, we are very peculiar because eagles are born on a rock or near That's a rock. Right. Amen. We as Christians, we are born on a rock of revelation, the Bible, the word of God. We are Amen. born of incorruptible, the word of God that leave it and abide it forever. Amen. If you are not born again from the Bible way, then you are not part of what I'm talking about. You won't understand these things because your eyes are not yet sharp. That's right. And another thing with eagles is this. Eagles never waste anything. What? They don't waste their food or resources. If they kill an animal, they eat every bit of that meat. Amen. We have been given the Bible to read every day and pray. Do we eat of these meat? Or do we waste our time on Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, Twitter, instead of keeping our face in God's book? How can we consider ourselves filled with the Holy Spirit when we are not eating of these meat? Oh my. That is why God likens only his children or his servants to eagles. That's right. Hallelujah. So, sister, if you hate the Bible, you don't like meditating on the word of God, you have not been born yet. That's right. But we can encourage you to see what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, quickly, eagles don't waste opportunities. And another thing they do is they are faithful creatures. That's There's right. one partner, the mama eagle and the papa eagle, join their hands together to raise their children together. Amen. Eagles are family oriented. That's and they right. train the children in the wisdom and admonition of the Lord. That's right. But if that is all that eagles go through, then we can clap and say, yes. We are eagles, but there is one thing that happens to an eagle as he gets older. Mm -hmm. He stops flying. He stops seeing clearly. Mm -hmm. He goes down into the valley. He gets discouraged. Mm -hmm. We call that the moping period. That's, That's right. When the eagle is around 30 years old or 35 years old, it just goes down into the valley. And when he goes into the valley, he loses his strength. Mm -hmm. He can't do the things he used to do before. While it's in that valley, calluses grow over his eyes and his beak. Mm -hmm. And he lays there just dying. But brothers and sisters, there are other eagles that have gone into that, into that valley and they have come out of it. Actually, in that valley, in that wilderness that the eagle goes into, very few percentage, maybe 20% or less of them ever come out of it. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, when you come to Jesus Christ, he that cometh unto God must first be tried. That's right. You have to overcome the challenges and the battles before Amen. you can be a Christian soldier. That's right. There are casualties in the wilderness mm -hmm. because initially you're on fire, you're praising the Lord. But then as you grow, God takes you into the wilderness. The spirit leads you to face the devil himself. And then Hallelujah. how are you going to overcome? How? Hey, man. That is when the eagles that have experienced, they recognize the signs of the wilderness. And they come flying and saying, brother, brother, 
You are going down in the valley. It's a normal occurrence, but we are here to encourage you. We are here to support you. Amen. Listen, friend, it takes an eagle that has been in that valley to understand and to encourage another eagle that is in that valley. Amen. And they begin to scream and holler and yell at that eagle and they will drop fresh meat. Why? Because brothers and sisters, when we see new believers, it is our responsibility to disciple them, to encourage them, to Amen. drop their fresh meat so they can Hallelujah. get wonder in the things of God, so they can overcome their, their problems. Amen. Some of these young people are hooked on pornography, hooked on all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But we throw them away because we ourselves probably never went through the wilderness yet. Oh, my. That is why Brad Brown tells us, he says, a man can have the Holy Ghost and still have unclean habits, such as smoking, drinking, and fornicating. Wow. Can you believe it? A Holy Ghost-filled person that is drinking, smoking, fornicating. What is the response that we have today? We we'll open the doors of the church and throw them out. But can we go into the wilderness and scream and holler and drop them words of encouragement from the Bible to tell the brother, come out of that. Come That's out of right. that. Come back to Jesus Christ. That's right. Because a lot of people think the road is easy, but it's not an easy road. That's why mm -hmm. we sing the song, it's not an easy road. Amen. But when that eagle, whichever one of them begins to take encouragement, it starts to eat a little bit of that meat, brother. When it begins to eat that meat, it starts getting stronger. And one day it gets strong enough, it claws its way to a rock. Now its feet are swollen now. Mm -hmm. And it begins to go to a rock and climbs on the rock. And he knocks his beak on the rock until all the calluses are off, brother. Mm -hmm. And then he flies a little bit because he's been eating and feeding on the word of God. That's right. And he climbs to the top of the rock. When he gets there, he regains his strength. And you know what happens to the eagle? When he get every eagle that gets out of the valley, they are stronger than before. Amen. They are smarter than before. They are two times as fast as before. And Amen. they never, never go back into the valley again. That's right. Let me read quickly verse 14 of Luke chapter 4. It says, And Jesus returned. That is after he overcame the devil and ended all the temptation. And Jesus returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all region round about. Hey, you want the power of God? You want the victory of the spirit? William Brown did not just become somebody that could do miracles just overnight. He had to go through the valley and come out. Amen. Order to go through the valley and come out. That's right. Jesus went into the wilderness and came out. Mm -hmm. You and I have to go into the wilderness and come out of it. And That's in the right. name of Jesus Christ, all of you hearing me today that are in the wilderness, I'm encouraging you, eat the word and come out. Amen. Come out in the name of Jesus. Overcome your temptations in the name of Jesus. Overcome Amen. the pornography in the name of Jesus. Amen. Overcome all the lying and all the weakness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It is not the devil. It is God testing you. That's right. Because you have to come out in the power. And last thing I want to say, when an eagle gets out, the first thing it does is it cries. Because a strong eagle knows how to cry. And when it is time to die, the eagle flies to his rock. Amen. And he stays on his rock, or he looks at his rock, and then he dies looking at his rock. Brother, sister, it's one day, if you and I are not going in the rapture, may we die facing the rock of, G of Revelation, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. May we die in the wheel of the Lord. This is our Christian training. We receive the Holy Ghost. He leads us into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Because everyone that cometh unto God must first be tried. And when we overcome the trials, or as you are hearing, 
what you're going through now, those are trials. You're supposed to have that. It's not an easy road. When you overcome that, then you will return in the power of the spirit. It is victors that we celebrate, not those who attempt at victory. If you go into a war, nobody will clap for you for going into a war. But when you come out as a champion, the world will celebrate you. That is why the Bible says in Revelation, unto him that overcome. So I pray tonight that we can overcome. God bless you. That is my gospel Bible. God bless you richly, my brother Howard. Oh, we are so blessed by this short and powerful ministration. Oh, hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, you heard it all. Brother Howard, you know, true light on uh, the children of God. When we are born, we are like eagles. Amen. And that means that we are born by the word of God. Now, the type that he made, he said the eagle is a bird. It's a very peculiar bird, which is very powerful. The higher it flies, the clearer it sees. That's right. And the eagle has certain characteristics. And he listed a few of the characteristics of the eagle. And he may mention of the fact that the eagle does not waste. Whatever meat he gets, he makes sure he devours the meat. He doesn't put anything to waste. That means that we need to what? To digest the word of God, which is That's our right. meat. Amen. The eagle also doesn't waste opportunities. When opportunities come his way, he makes use of that. Our brother also touched on the fact that the eagle is a faithful bird. It's a family-oriented bird. The mama eagle and the, pap uh, the, the papa eagle are able to what? Bring out their, their siblings and, and, and their children up in wherever they find themselves. Our brother also made mention of the fact that the, the eagle, when he becomes very old, he stops flying and then goes to the what? the top of the rock, you know? And then there, he descends into the what? The valley. And then from there, he begins what? To regain his strength, you know? And our brother may mention of the father, that is just as the Lord Jesus Christ also went and he was tempted and he came out very strong and so, when he came out strong, then the Holy Ghost and power was in his life, went about doing good, casting out devils, and doing the signs and wonders. That is how the eagle is also eats. When he goes into the valley and comes up, then his, the strength is renewed. That's right. When the eagle comes out, he cries. You know, and when there is time for the eagle to die, he goes back to the rock, the rock of revelation. Jesus be the rock of revelation in our life. We need to go back to that rock, the rock that our faith is built upon. Right. Oh, we are so blessed. Just is just a way of summary of what the brother said. Oh, brother Howard, may the Lord bless you richly. This ministration is short but powerful. Amen. And we Amen. pray that we are going to have more ministration for our dear brother from the States, our dear servant of God. May the Lord bless you richly for your ministration. We are so grateful. Thank you. Amen and amen. And so without much ado, this is a short ministration by the way of the gospel by today. We thank you for be in our company and uh, giving audience to our brother from the U.S. Without much ado, I'll ask our brother to close us in a short word of prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Precious Lord Jesus, we thank you because you love us so much. That's why 
you gave unto us the word of life that we can transmit your mind to your children as the good news. Lord, this evening we have heard from you, knowing that the trials that we are facing, the challenges that we are encountering, it is not the devil, it is God's way. Yes. Of to overcome the situations so that we can be stars in his hands. Father, we thank you so much this evening because the word of God dispels all darkness and brings clarity. Amen. We thank you for the bird eagle and we thank you for likening your children to eagles. And Father, we appreciate your word, the wisdom of creation, and we pray that each and every one of us will stop looking at our problems as battles that we cannot win, but looking at them as challenges that God has given us the power and the wisdom to conquer so that yes. we can have them take encouragement from the gospel bite and move on to better things where we can glorify your name. Thank you, Lord, for this ministry. Bless our brother Lawrence and all of our brothers and sisters who are listening to this word and those who have not decided to follow you May they look at it and say, I desire to fight in that kingdom. I desire to be an eagle. May you touch their heart and save their soul from hell. We thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you all for your time. Until we come your way another time by the gospel bite, stay tuned. And may the Lord bless you. Shalom. <laughs>